guys welcome back to my channel um today i'm just going to do a video a little bit about um mine and my husband's um journey through our infertility that we had um for those of you who don't already know um we have got um a daughter who's just turned two last week and we also have uh, 16 week old uh, boy girl twins as well um both who we had through um ivf treatment um which we are absolutely um so so grateful for um so oh beginning of the story then so um probably i would say about four months before me and my husband got uh were due to get married um we both decided that um we wanted to try to have a baby um just before we got married um we didn't know how long obviously it would take but like i suppose most couples you think um that after a few months that uh, you would uh, be pregnant and you'd have a baby and you don't think about any of the problems that could possibly happen it just doesn't enter your mind um when you're just starting out so um i would say about six months into trying uh, to have a baby um by this point obviously we'd had our wedding we were married um and nothing was happening um i think deep down i just i knew something just wasn't quite right um you know everyone around me was telling me you know um oh it's because you're stressed um, the more you think about it, the more you worry about it, um, you know, it won't happen. Um, and it was just really um, frustrating, like, month after month, obviously, seeing that it just hadn't happened. Um, so we carried on a bit longer, and in the end I said to my husband that I wanted to go to see the doctor. Um, we went over to the um, doctor's surgery, and they basically just said that... Um, you know it hadn't been that long um and six months isn't uh, you know a long time most people within a year get pregnant um that again um we shouldn't stress about it worry about it um that everything was probably normal um so just keep trying um and they kept saying oh but and you're so young um you've got loads of time um me and my husband um got married I, well I was 22 when I got married so I was just 22 um and they kept saying I say you're very young you've got loads of time um it doesn't really help when you really really want to start a family and um it's just not happening um and there's somebody constantly telling you you're really really young you've got loads of time well obviously oh <laughs> typical that's my phone one second hi guys sorry I'm back um <laughs> typical um that was my phone um that was just my health visitor ringing and checking in on um myself and the twins so anyway uh where was i so i was just telling you about obviously um going to the doctors and um the doctor just keep telling us you know uh, we've got loads of time we're really young uh, there's no problems basically he thinks that um everything was normal so we went away um it was another few months that passed and once again um nothing was happening um so we went back to the doctors again and just said like we're still nothing happening um like what what can we do next so um with a bit of a push and um quite a bit of reluctancy from the doctors they agreed to do um a blood test on myself um so uh, at a specific time of the month they had to take the blood test i think it was like hormone levels or something um just to see um you know what was going on um and they basically said that my blood test came back that i wasn't ovulating um and it wasn't ovulating at all or at the right time um for the blood test that when they took it um so obviously that was just not helping um <laughs> so then um they yeah they really didn't do very much um we then had to request um my husband um 
to have a, a sperm analysis done or a sample taken um, to see what was happening with him. Um, again, there was a lot of reluctancy from the doctors. They, they kind of said, you know, um, unless it's been two years of consistently trying, they didn't really want to do anything. Um, they normally didn't do any investigations until it's been two years. And I think for us it had been about, um, I think it had been about a year by this point now. Um, so we really had to kind of say no um, and be strong that we want to have this test done, um, that there is something not right, along with myself not ovulating, then uh, we just want to see what we're up against. Um, so we finally agreed to uh, do a, a semen analysis and um, when that came back, um, the doctor said that basically um, his levels um, were not good, so he had low um, low motility um, and he also had low um, low levels of sperm as well. So basically all in all, um, not really very good news. Um, they said about um, repeating the sample again, I think in like um, six weeks time or something. Um, so once again, we repeated the sample um, and again, the, you know, it showed exactly the same result. Um, so me at this point, um, I was just um, in pieces um, to be told that um, it would be really, really difficult for us to have a baby. Um, you know, naturally anyway, um, was just the worst thing I could ever be told. Um, people who know me will know that um, from such a young age, all I've ever wanted to do was be a mum and have children. Um, I've always loved kids. Um, and, you know, even me and my husband, when we first got together, um, before we were married, um, straight away the subject of children came up and we both said that we really wanted children. We said we wanted a big family. Um, so it was never, um, you know, it was never something that was ever in doubt in our minds. So to be told um, that it possibly might not happen for us was just um, the worst news I could possibly hear um, as a woman being told I can't do that um, necessarily. So um, I didn't take the news very well. Um, I was really upset. Um, I just didn't really want to um, deal with it. Um, my way of dealing with it was at the time I just wanted to work so I just threw myself into work um, I picked up lots of extra shifts when I could because um, it was just my way of kind of um, just ignoring it keeping busy and not thinking about what was actually happening but actually it really wasn't helping me um, and I was just feeling um, tired and exhausted and just everything eventually just piled up on me um, and I just kind of snapped really. Um, so, um, again, also it wasn't easy on my husband. Um, you know, he took it quite badly as well. Um, I suppose from his point of view, he thought that, um, you know, as a man, he's supposed to be able to, um, um, be able to provide children for us. And because there was also something um, not right with him as well, um, he also blamed himself and beat himself up, which, um, you know, was just, it was just not a very good time really for either of us. Um, so we both, um, you know, we were, um, being told that we could be, um, be referred to a, um, a gynecologist. Um, but for those of you who, um, aren't from the UK, um, Obviously, the UK, um, we are um, running on the National Health Service or the NHS, um, which it it's free healthcare as such. We um, it means that obviously our healthcare is free, um, but it does mean that unfortunately um, things in this country can be very very slow as far as referrals go or investigations, test results. Everything is very very slow to get back and for things to actually happen. So um, when we were told we were being referred, um, it could take at least um, a good few months until we actually um, was contacted by a gynaecology at the hospital um, to see whether we could have an appointment. Um, so me and my husband both agreed that for a few investigations that we would pay privately um, ourselves to go and just see a gynaecologist, just have a few um, routine tests done um, kind of just to speed the process along so we knew exactly what we were dealing with um 
So we went to a private hospital and um, we paid to see a gynecologist um, the gynecologist did a um, um, an internal scan um, on myself um, because they he thought that I might have polycystic ovaries. Um, he actually uh, found that I didn't have polycystic ovaries um, and I also didn't seem to have any problems. He couldn't see anything wrong with the scan. Um, basically um everything was fine and he actually said on the scan he um thought that i was just about to ovulate so we were like okay that's brilliant so i am ovulating um so that all just seemed a little bit confusing really um we also did another um semen sample which again um confirmed everything we already knew with my husband low low count low motility um, basically, the private gynaecologist said that um, just with my husband's issues alone, um, that without um, taking into consideration anything that might be wrong with myself, um, he just said that he thought it would be very difficult for me to um, get pregnant naturally, that he felt um, just with my husband's issues alone um, that we needed to have IVF treatment um, to have a baby, basically. Um, so we kind of went away and it was kind of in our heads that um okay yeah we're, we're gonna probably need to go through IVF um treatment to have a baby that's probably going to be the only way um we will be able to have a family um so um we couldn't afford to go privately for the um IVF itself so we decided to um then wait for our um gynecology referral with the NHS um, the appointment came through and we went to the hospital um, a few months later to see the gynaecologist. Um, he then wanted, um, again, another scan done, um, which they don't do there and then. They have to then refer you for another scan. So again, that's more time. Um, and also they had to have a big tick list of everything that they had to have um, in your file done before they can even refer you to have IVF. Um, so again it was um, both of us having to have more blood tests, I had to have another scan, um, oh, there was I think even like um, immunisations had to be updated and everything else, like vaccinations, there was a whole, um, a whole list of things that had to be done before um, they could even um, think about doing the referral for IVF. Um, so again, really frustrating um, because it was just more and more time that was going by um, and just constantly jumping through hoops. Um, on the plus side, the gynaecologist at the hospital was quite good in the way that um, he didn't want to continue any more further investigations with myself. Um, just because of my husband's issues, he was happy to refer us on, on that. Um, so for myself, I was a little bit, um, a little bit undiagnosed. They kind of stopped and didn't investigate me any further. So even to this day now, um, I don't actually know um, why I can't get pregnant. If it's, um, if it is just um, my husband, or if there is actually a problem with myself as well. Um, so I don't know. Um, they didn't do any more um, investigations into myself. Um, so uh we yeah we basically jumped through all the hoops um i don't know also um again viewers that aren't from the uk um when you live in the uk we are um also depending on actually i think it depends on actually where you live in the uk um they group it to like area in the uk i think um but depending on where you live you get a certain amount of ivf um treatments for free on the nhs so for um, my area, we got, uh, well, we were entitled to two um, fresh rounds of IVF and two frozen rounds of IVF. Um, obviously, anything after that, if it was needed, then um, you would have to be a private patient and you would have to pay. Um, but um, at the beginning, as long as you and your husband don't have any uh, living children, and also um, there's a few other things that you have to, you can't be smokers, um, your BMI has to be under a certain amount. There's a few little things like check boxes that you have to have um, before actually you're entitled to it on the NHS. Um, I'm guessing that's because they want you to have the best chance um, because obviously um, IVF is very expensive. Um, so we, um, 
we got our uh, IVF first IVF appointment through. Um, obviously, it's just a consultation at this point with the um, with the consultant. Um, and I would say it, it took quite a few months, quite a few quite a few months for all the testing to be done and actually to get our first appointment. Probably about six months, I would say, um, another six months from when we saw the um, consultant at the hospital. So we had our um, we had a consultant appointment. Um, and he was he was a little bit confusing i have to say he kind of said um oh actually um you know his sperm analysis isn't isn't actually that bad um and that he thought that um being referred for the ivf was a little bit premature and he would have recommended us to carry on trying naturally um for um longer and again the whole age thing came up um he sort of said oh um you know you're so young um you've got loads of time you know you don't have to do this right now um you can go away and try again um for longer naturally and then come back um if you know it still hasn't worked um and that he also then wasn't very happy with the fact that they didn't do any further investigations into myself um so um yeah he said i should have had some sort of dye test done um where they inject the dye i think into my fallopian tubes to see if any of any of them were blocked he said he felt that i should have had that test done um first which i didn't and um so yeah it hadn't been done basically um he did say though however um because we had been referred if we wanted to continue with the ivf treatment that he would um he would carry on with it if that's what me and my husband both wanted and agreed at the time um which there was no doubt in our minds that that's what we wanted to carry on with um we were not being sent away again um to then wait another months years however long um we were ready to start ivf um straight away basically um so pretty much with my first cycle um we went ahead and um decided to start the ivf treatment um so at the first cycle um we were doing obviously was a fresh round so um they give you um lots of um like injection stimulants to um stimulate the ovaries um basically for you to produce um lots of eggs um in both ovaries so i injected myself um i think it was for it was for about 10 days maybe maybe longer um to be honest it's been quite a long time since obviously we had the first lot done um but we definitely uh, did the injections um took all of the tablets i needed to take um and then they told me um, I was going every other day for scans, so they were checking the growth of the um, the eggs um, or the follicles, I believe they're called. Um, they were checking the growth. So when they were actually at their what they believed at their optimum um, size, they then book you in for you to have the egg collection done. So um, I had obviously my egg collection booked in for I believe it was like a day or two after. Um, and you have to take a trigger injection for then I'm guessing for a, for a certain amount of time 36 hours or something before you have it done um, I'm guessing that that then releases them um, unfortunately um, it was a bit of trial and error with the drugs where I hadn't had them before and I took quite a long time um, to actually stimulate enough um, follicles and for them to be the right size it had been quite a long time and they say normally by this point they would have done the egg collection by now and um, I was still having to um, stimulate them so it had been over sort of the normal amount of time but they went ahead and did the egg collection anyway they thought that there was quite a few there um, so I went in for the egg collection early in the morning um, and uh, had to go around to um, get sedated they um, they give you sedation when you have a collection um, so you're not actually put out um, but the sedation for myself um, was so strong I generally once they put it in um, I felt a little bit dizzy and then after that I don't remember anything um, nothing at all until I literally were, uh, sort of came around um, to my senses I suppose or woke up or whatever you call it um, until I was in recovery and that's when I first actually had any recollection of what, what had happened um, 
Um, all I remember is waking up um, being in so much pain. Um, it was really, really um, like lower um, abdominal discomfort and pain. Um, really sore. I felt like I'd really been pulled about. Um, and also I had some bleeding as well. Um, so they kept me in for the kind of like the day. Gave me um, like uh, pain, pain relief um, and checked on me. Uh, the consultant came round and spoke to me and my husband and said that unfortunately um, it hadn't been a very successful egg collection. Um, he said that he'd only managed to collect three eggs, um, which those of you who've had egg collection before, that's really not, not a lot. I mean, it's better than none, obviously, but it's really not a lot when you're wanting um, sort of your best chance. So we'd only had three eggs collected. He also said he had a real, real lot of trouble with my right um, ovary. That basically um, he only was able to collect the eggs from my left side because my right side was um, really difficult to get to. He said my ovary was behind my womb where it was positioned, and they had pulled me about and pushed them on my stomach and tried to get to the left, the right ovary, but he couldn't get to it and he didn't deem it safe. So he couldn't actually do any collection from that side, um, which is really disappointing um, because I believe I had more follicles on the right side anyway. Um, so we went away um, pretty upset that everything hadn't worked the way we wanted it. Um, we still had a chance though, we still had three, um, uh, three um, eggs. So we um, went home and they said that they would then, um, um, f you know, f go ahead and uh, perform the ICSI, which is um, where they uh, inject the sperm into the egg, which is what we had to have done. Um, they do that then um, and overnight they, you have to wait until the morning when they actually call you and tell you whether the, um, the eggs have fertilised and have they, uh, they become um, embryos, basically. Um, so we went home um, and we waited that call. It was a horrendous night, you know, waiting for that call to find out whether they'd actually made it to become embryos. Um, unfortunately, when um, the embryologist called us in the morning, um, it wasn't good news. Um, we had um, two embryos who just that hadn't fertilised just at all. Um, and we had one that had fertilised abnormally, so actually none were able to be used, and that actually was the end of our um, first cycle and our, our first round, fresh round of IVF. Um, once um, you don't get anything, there's not really anything else you can do. You can't go forward any further. So that was the that was it. Um, there was nothing they could do. Um, at this point, I was. Um, just absolutely distraught it was like it was the end of the world I just thought like you know that's one of my chances up and um, I didn't know I just didn't know what to do I was very negative very scared about carrying on um, just thinking is this ever going to happen for us basically um, I also continued to have a lot of pain um, I think it didn't help my mental state. I felt very, very down. I was really negative, um, but I also was having a lot of pain and discomfort. Um, and after a few days, I ended up doubling over in real, real pain. I was um, like vomiting. It was, it was really awful. Um, and uh, turned out I had um, an infection after from from having the egg collection done. Um, so. Then I had to take antibiotics for that um, and slowly recover. Um, we then went back to the um, the hospital uh, for like a recap of what happened, and then they decide um, or you decide actually where, when you want to continue with the treatment if you want to. Um, I was there was no doubt in my mind, and I was so determined that I wanted to carry on and I wanted to do it immediately. I didn't want to have a break like they recommended. Uh, they recommended to have a few months to kind of get over it um, to recover and I did not want that at all. I was like, no, I am going to go forward with this. I want to just crack on, get it done. So I literally went with my next cycle, um, which actually all of our friends and family really didn't agree with, um, as well as the doctors. They all thought that I needed rest, that I needed to just take a break um, and not go ahead straight away. Um, I was totally just headstrong on this, that this is what I wanted. 
Um, my husband said he would support me, um, you know, with whatever decision I decided to make because I was going through this. Um, so we went ahead um, and once again we did another fresh round. Um, this time round though, they didn't do what they call the short round. So we'd had the short round done the first time. This time round they decided to do what they call the long round of IVF, um, which is basically where they um, they gave me drugs to kind of put me into a menopause state. Um, and they kind of described it as like resetting my whole system again. Um, so I had like a bleed and um, then I had and I had the drugs that make you feel like you're in the menopause. So it was they weren't very nice. It was like I had like the hot sweats um, and like the mood swings. Um, yeah, it was oh, it was horrible for the first for however long it was. I think it was like a, a week or two of that, and that was really horrible. Um, but then we went ahead again and we did the stimulation um, for the egg collection, ready for the egg collection. But he obviously this time round um, used a different kind of drug, I believe, um, and I think they used obviously a different dose. So they're trying something different. Um, straight away, my eggs, um, you know, my body completely. Um, responded to this quite well and um, a lot quicker my follicles were growing and there was a lot more this time um, so that was really good and I was ready for egg collection so much quicker um, so we went through for the egg collection again and um, it, yeah everything went so much more smoothly this time round uh, I didn't have the pain straight after we didn't have all the um, all of the difficulties they didn't have the difficulties that they had the first time um and i believe we had seven i think it was seven maybe it was yeah i think it was seven eggs um this time round um which still wasn't actually a huge amount of eggs but it was still a lot better um and we had i believe we had six was it six or five Six, five or six that had um that had actually um um no it was five five that had actually um fertilized this time and they were all really good grades they call them so they grade them depending on um their quality and all five of my were were pretty good quality really and they were happy with all of them the next day so we went ahead then a few days later and they did the um or oh, actually it was day two no it was the day after so actually no it was day two so it was the day after they then got went ahead and brought us in for the um embryo transfer which is where they actually put the embryo into you into yourself again in the theater um this time around though you don't need any sedation and um, because it's there's no pain or anything um horrible that's going to happen so on day two we had our embryo transferred um you basically just go into the theatre um, and the um, consultant will then use like a catheter, a tiny little tubing of catheter where they would put the embryo in um, and then they would put it up into your uterus using a scanner um, and then you wait a few minutes and they pull it out. Then the embryologist will check that the embryo has actually left the catheter and that um, it is inside you and not stuck still in the catheter. So we then... Um, went home uh, I was actually again still feeling really negative um, and I kind of just kept saying oh, I don't think it's gonna work it's not gonna happen um, I think maybe um, this time around it, it, it just won't happen I don't feel good about it um, so you have to then wait two weeks um, after your transfer to do a pregnancy test um, the two-week wait is horrendous the worst two weeks of your life just constantly worrying and stressing um and just wondering basically whether it's gonna have worked um i actually the day before my um test was due i came home from work and um i just had decided that day i was going to do a pregnancy test when i came home um i basically thought it was going to be negative so i would rather have took the test when i come home from work so i had the evening to cry about it and get really upset and just kind of deal with it than take it first thing in the morning just before work and then have found out that I was not pregnant and be absolutely in pieces and, and just not then be able to go to work that day so I thought right I'm gonna do it um so I didn't tell my husband I just went up to the bathroom said I was gonna have a shower um and took the pregnancy test chucked it on the side um and was about to get in the shower 
Um, so midway through having my shower, I just had a quick little peek um, and it was positive. Um, and I just, well, I just cried. I didn't believe it. Um, I just, it was the best thing that ever happened. Um, so straight away I called, I called, I called my husband up um, and he was just, he was over the moon as well. Um, but he kind of said he had a, um, he kind of had an inkling that I was doing that. He said he knew that I had probably gone upstairs to do a test early anyway. But um, yeah, so we were just so relieved, happy, everything just was amazing. Um, so yeah, we, um, we had our scan at seven weeks with the private hospital and there was um, one embryo there, uh, yeah, one embryo there. Everything was fine. Um, they ha the baby had a heartbeat. Um, and then they uh, discharged us from the IVF clinic and we were referred for normal maternity care um, on the NHS. Um, and eight months later, we had um, a daughter um, called Olympia. Uh, and she is absolutely amazing. We couldn't, we can, you know, be more um, grateful and blessed with such a, a perfect little girl. We really couldn't. We're so lucky. Um, and she was worth everything that we went through. Um, so we then decided when our daughter was 10 months old, um, we wanted to go ahead and have the IVF again. Um, so we then went back to our clinic, um, this time knowing that we wouldn't be NHS patients, we would actually be um, paying as private patients uh, because once we already had a child we weren't then entitled to any funding. So we knew that we um, we had some embryos still frozen from leftover from our, having our daughter. So we knew it wasn't going to be, you know, starting at the beginning, the full amount of money. Um, it was going to be a lot more affordable for us to do privately. Um, so we went ahead and spoke to the consultant. Um, said we wanted to go ahead again um, and we then obviously this time round we're going to be doing a frozen round because they were frozen and they were already embryos so we didn't have to go through the egg collection or the stimulation again um, <clears throat> so I had the the um, drugs the hormones to help me and um, you know get ready for um, the uh, embryo transfer for my womb to be um, at the thickest point that they want for um for them to transfer the embryo and um <clears throat> the consultant had already said to us you know um you're um you're young still um you've already had a baby um and we recommend only having one embryo transferred um because of those you know of those factors they didn't want to um they didn't want to risk us having any multiple pregnancies um, so they felt that one embryo was sufficient to go ahead with. Um, me and my husband at the time weren't very happy about that, we, we both had spoken about it, we both wanted to have two embryos put in, um, you know, to give us the best chance of pregnancy. Um, we weren't really thinking about um, multiples, it was just that we wanted um, more of a success rate of a pregnancy to happen. Um, Hi guys, sorry, my camera died, so um, I just had to um, recharge it and then obviously come back to you. So um, I was talking about um, obviously going back, having the uh, IVF treatment again, and we were also saying that the consultant only wanted um, us to have one embryo transferred, um, not more than one, because he thought that we would have a high risk of having a multiple pregnancy, um, which obviously um, they did not want. Um, because it's obviously high risk um, so um, we weren't very happy we we said we wanted more than one put we wanted to put in um, and in the UK you can only have maximum of two put in anyway there are quite strict laws on it um, so two is the maximum you can have put in and we wanted those those to put, be put in um, <clears throat> we both had already said you know if if we if we ended up with twins then that that would be fine and if we end up with more um, but we just really didn't even think that would happen we thought no we would just have um, the best chance of a pregnancy so um, the consultant didn't agree to that <clears throat> he said no um, so we went along and thought well we'll, we'll have the one embryo put in um, then um, the day before the embryo transfer um, was to happen the embryologist gave us a call on the phone and just um to update us on our embryos how they were doing um to tell us what happens in the, the next day and what time to come in 
because obviously they um they get the embryos out of the freezer i think like a few hours or a certain amount of time before you actually come in to have your transfer done um so um they were just having a chat to us about that and we then um the the embryologist actually said to us um you know how many embryos would you like me to thaw out for you for how many would you like transferred and we both actually said well um you know we want we want two transferred but the consultant had already said that actually um he only wanted us to have one um so the embryologist um said you know um technically it is um it is our choice it, completely our choice on what we want um that basically he explained all of the risks so when they th thaw out one thing that me and my husband didn't actually know was that um when they actually thaw out some of them actually don't survive the thawing out process so basically um they could thaw it out and it, it may not even survive that and then we wouldn't actually have an embryo to use in the first place um we both felt that we didn't want that to happen um we didn't want to get there and then find out that actually the the embryo hadn't survived um so the embryologist said that um one of the embryos was slightly over to slightly lower quality so he recommended possibly getting two embryos out to thaw um and you know just seeing what happens again we didn't even know that we thought maybe our one may may not survive the thawing out process so we'd only only end up getting one anyway um, as it happens the next morning they called us and actually um, both of the embryos had survived the thawing out process um, they hadn't degraded at all they they were still um, in really good um, condition for transfer so um, basically the embryologist overruled our consultant and um, and decided that yes we could have the two embryos put back in um, so we went along um, and had um, both the embryos transferred um, and again we went away for the two-week wait thinking um you know it, it, we may get a pregnancy we may not um and i would say after about a week after first week i knew i was pregnant um i had cramping i i felt thing, things were just going on inside and i just knew something was changing I just felt pregnant. I'd been pregnant before um, and I felt pregnant. Um, and I basically, <laughs> I cheated. So I am um, five days before I was supposed to do my test. Um, I bought one of just these cheap tests and I thought, oh, I'll just have a little look and I'll cheat and just see if anything's happening. Um, so I bought a test, just a cheap one that, you know, the lines come through. And I got quite a strong positive. Um, literally um after doing it five days early um and straight away i thought mm, something's not quite right here you know um to have a, a positive that strong that early um there must be um there must be more hormone involved so there must be more than one baby um so i kind of had had an idea that something was not normal um and was slightly different about this pregnancy um my husband straight away said um you know i know it's twins it, it will be twins um and straight away he actually said um i bet we'll have twins and i bet we'll have a boy and a girl and i just kind of laughed and i thought mm, we'll see um the family were obviously um hoping we didn't have twins um because they just knew that it would be really really hard work for us um and obviously we already had a, a one-year-old at this point so knowing that we would then potentially have um you know three children under the age of two um i think they were a little bit worried for us that um it was going to be really hard to cope with um so i think they were all hoping it was just one um but me and my husband knew differently um so we went for our seven week scan at the uh, fertility clinic and um yeah there was um there was two there you know that i laid down the lady said um oh well, there's the first heartbeat and i straight away said the first like how many how many are in there and she said oh no there's definitely two there's there's two babies there's two heartbeats um everything was absolutely fine um they confirmed there and then that they were the embryos that had um been put in so they were the separate embryos um meaning that um the babies were for for, twer for uh, i can't even say the word uh, fraternal twins so they um had their own separate sacs they had their own separate placentas so they were not identical they were frater fraternal twins 
um so um both of the embryos had actually taken and um yeah so we were we were expecting twins um and we would have three children under the age of two um which was amazing we had so many um amazing thoughts we were just so happy um, and grateful um there was not a part of us that thought oh my god how are we going to do this not at all we were just excited and just so grateful and happy um so yeah that um and you know um sort of seven eight months later um our uh, boy girl twins were born uh, rio and india um and they are absolutely perfect um we couldn't again we couldn't be more happy um we've got our perfect little family now everything that we always wanted um and we are just so grateful to everybody involved who helped us um through our journey and um if it wasn't for IVF um we just wouldn't we wouldn't have our family so um we're so grateful to um you know the science and the technology that we have nowadays um so yeah that's our um IVF infertility story for you um I've tried to explain it I know it's been a very very long video um but I've tried to explain it as best as I could for you and and, and as honestly as I could for you um from what I can recall um so if you guys have any questions or um if there's anything that I wasn't very clear on then just um you know post in the comments down below and um just uh just ask me and I'll uh, get back to you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, uh, please give it a thumbs up um, and uh, keep watching. Okay, bye.